This is the Obscurity to Authority podcast with your host, Darren Cabral. And we're live. I'm here with my boy, Daniel Ferrugia. Really excited today to talk sales, talk growing your business, talk the come up. This man's got a story, man. Thank you so much for joining me today, buddy. Yes, sir. Very excited. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So we're going to talk about a few things today because you have a uh, you have a particular track record. I know we met originally. I had talked to your friend, Corey. Uh, we did have Corey on the podcast. You know him very well, I assume, right? Yeah. Corey's been my mentor, man. Yes. So yeah. we had him on the podcast. Good stuff, buddy. Yeah, we had him on the podcast. He said great things. Uh, I met you through him. We've talked a lot about sales, about business, about growth, about making money, about... I mean, everything, man, like life, right? So you have a lot of great insights. You've been helping me out a lot um, just in terms of advice and just understanding uh, sales and business has been very useful. So I thought I would bring you onto the podcast and share some of the value that you have because there's a ton of it. Um, I mean, you, you don't just, you know, you're not just a salesperson. You're truly an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur, um, as they'd call them. And you know what it takes to really build something from the ground up. So why don't yes. you tell us a little bit about what it is that you do right now let's just give the perspective of who you are what you're working on and what you've done yeah so what we do right now is i run a sales team uh we have anywhere from 40 to roughly 50 sales rep across sales reps across ontario um so from mississauga to windsor to hamilton um to north bay and what we do is we sell we sell products door to door so a mix of door to door and like different events across um, across Ontario and their telecommunication products. Nice. And you're responsible for a bunch of people on that team right now that's doing that. Yeah, pretty much. Good. And pretty revenue much numbers. I mean, I think we heard from Corey, but let's just say right now in all the business things you're involved in, what's what's the revenue number kind of you're responsible for? Um, yeah, I would want to say it's a seven figure a um, sales business. Yep. Yeah. For See, sure. I put I push for numbers here. You don't have to answer anything, by the way. If there's any, like, if anything's <laughs> uncomfortable or you can't talk about it, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. But I'm gonna push because I know a lot of reviewers. It's like they're so numbered. They, they want to know who's here, like who's got the authority, right? Why should we listen? Yeah, to Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you like a rough idea. Uh, last week we installed about um, anywhere from 250 customers yeah. to uh, in a in a week, right? Yeah. So 250 to 350 homes within a week. And the average sale so, per home uh, is like what? What are we talking? A thousand bucks? A hundred thousand yeah, bucks? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's about two products, right? So it could be it could be internet and TV. Right. It could be um, you know just internet. It could be internet, TV, and home phone. Right. So um, yeah, it could it could range from from a couple hundred bucks to um, you know a couple thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So bottom line is, I mean, I I, I know what you do. I want to make sure everyone else did too. But I mean, you're running a great operation right now. You're an expert at all things sales at business growth, at making deals happen, and making money flow, most importantly. Um, and you've helped a lot of other people get really good at that too, uh, which has resulted yeah. in the overall success of the organization you work in. Um, so the reason we brought you on today specifically is to kind of nail two things. Because one, I think that it's important for everyone to understand that sales is everything. Sales is everything in business. Without sales, nothing else, like your accounting doesn't matter, your finances don't matter, your legal doesn't matter if something's not being sold. Something somewhere has to get sold. Yeah. Um, and that poses two big opportunities, and that's why we brought you in. The first is for individuals looking to build a career, sales is yeah. an incredible opportunity. I've always said if I ever, like if the agency didn't work out or my business didn't work out, the first thing I'd be doing is sales, right? Because, yeah. and there's a lot, and maybe I'll let you speak to those benefits of why, um, but that's a big opportunity. So I want to talk about that today a little bit, and there's a lot of young mm -hmm. guys, young entrepreneurial type guys um, that are, are getting into this career, but also yeah. as a business, how important is it to Higher, and I've I've called you asking about this too because I'm curious. I've asked Corey the same thing. Um, how important mm -hmm. is it to hire someone to do your sales, and how do you train them, and how do you build a team around them? How do you make sure they're successful? Um, so I want to yeah. touch on both those things today. So can we do that? Yeah, for sure, man. Awesome, awesome. for sure. Yeah, awesome. and I would also like to talk about kind of like where I've come from yep. and uh, kind of what, like what was the biggest drive for me. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know how many. Uh, how many viewers have ever done cold calling, right. but it can be, it can be an, a very interesting job, especially if you don't have a why. And especially if you don't have the, the drive, because it's, it's definitely something, you know, I always compare it to lifting weights, mm. you know, it's, you're, you're putting your, you're, you're putting your body against a bunch of resistance 
and you know you feel completely sore and it's about building that muscle and while you're building that muscle you can go through a lot of uh, times where you know you just it, it hurts you just don't want to go to the gym the next day right mm-hmm. and you create this phenomenal result if you stick with it but that was the biggest thing for me like um, what I want to actually add Darren was that you know um, for myself um, I, I actually grew up, you know, a, a big reason of what pushed me through sales was communication. Right. Um, I was, I was never good at communication. I actually, believe it or not, I actually grew up with a stuttering, um, whatever you want to call it. I, I couldn't even say my name. Wow. Really? And yeah, it was, it a was, speech it was funny because a speech impediment. Yeah. I was, I used to go to a speech pathologist. Huh. I went to one at two. I went to one at uh, 14 pretty sure I went to one when I was 17. Wow. And, uh, and it was crazy. It was, it was crazy because, you know, a big thing with me and I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually almost done this book. It's called, I'm, I'm choosing names right now. It's either called speechless or it's called, um, the stuttering salesman. Nice. One of those names. But, um, a big thing for me was I always grew up with, with this issue and I always, I was trying to find ways to overcome it. And I, I remember um, going to a speech pathologist. I would I would read all these books. I would study all these successful people. Well, I would I would I would watch people in non in a non creepy way, but right. you know, would sometimes more creepy, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I, I I really remember going on YouTube, and this guy wore this earpiece, um, earpiece, and it was it was like an echo in his voice in his ear. Mm. So when he spoke, um, he wouldn't stutter. And I and I I would try to do all these different things, and then for somehow. I found sales and it was like my communication school Wow! and it forced me to like, you know, um, knock on a door, you know, cause I told myself if I could talk to 40 to 50 people a day, uh-huh. I would, I would get over my stutter one day. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was the biggest thing, man. And then I used it to overcome it. So I remember like I would knock on a door and I would, I would just be like, hi, my name is, all right. I was like, you know what, brother, let me get out of here. I, you know what? I'm, I'm, this isn't going anywhere. And he's like, okay. As if sales isn't hard enough already to go into that with a speech impediment. Well, that's it. Well, I used it as a way to overcome my biggest fear. I used it literally. I was like, this scares me. Whenever I would be in groups or, you know, in family parties or, you know, like I was that kid. I don't know if you remember, uh, Darren, but in grade seven, you know, where you would read like a paragraph yeah. from a textbook. Yeah, yeah. In front of class, yeah, yeah. I would be that kid. Everyone would be like, oh, God, no. Right? Oh, dear. And I'd be stuck single word like i remember i i got nightmares and i, and I, I don't want to get too much into I it i never really thought that just, i never i've never by the way this is the first time i'm hearing this everyone that's listening like, <laughs> i would never have guessed of all people that was you there's no dude choice. i was i was i remember and i actually wrote this in the book um water i couldn't say it i couldn't wow. say the word water wow. and I, I was reading the textbook and i was i was in grade seven now this is like when you're 13 and like you know, you're starting to like girls and you're trying to act cool and shit. Yeah, yeah. And I remember I was, I read this, I read this damn sentence. And then I said, I, I said it literally like this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm like, all right, Daniel, don't fuck this up. Oh my whoa, God. whoa, whoa, Daniel, please. I'm begging. Whoa, 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 water. <laughs> and, I, okay, and it was like one of these times where like everything just like, like the whole world just stopped. Wow. And I looked. My face went red, and I'm like, "All right, I'm sure, I'm sure no one heard that. I'm sure no one heard that." And I looked up, and the whole class is fucking laughing. Oh shit! And the worst was the teacher was laughing, and I, like honestly, he was That's an amazing hard. teacher. Yeah. But when you get the whole class laughing at you, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it can really, it Bye. can really fuck with. You. No. <laughs> so let's let's we I let's see this is stuff I didn't know. So let's be before we get into all the, the sales talk that we're gonna yeah. get to, I wanna go back and yeah, I wanna tell that story more clearly because I mean obviously like I know you know you're a high income earner, I would classify it as you've been relatively successful. Um you've done a lot of really cool things. I know where you are now, but obviously like you weren't just born into that, it wasn't given to you. What was I the was journey actually, like? Right. I was actually so if you know my friend Andrew, Andrew Kaspiris. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, he was he was two years younger than me, and he I always compare it to him because he was he was just naturally gifted. He his work ethic is phenomenal, but he was naturally gifted. Um, like I remember when we first started Lead Core, um, which was the Corey that uh, or the company that uh, Corey was the director for. Right. Um, I started, and when I started, I, I was zeroing like three days in a row, uh. and, and I remember Andrew. He would, I think he did like five, six sales the first day. And, um, I like, I think what makes me a good leader, cause that's, that's what one of my strengths are. Right. What makes me a good leader is I've been at, like, I know what it's like when like you're the underdog, uh, no one's fucking betting on you. Mm. You're even doubting yourself. So yeah, man, I was, uh, I, I, I literally do it. It was like the world was against me. And it was like the hardest shit that yeah. I grew up with. Yeah. I'm like, I'm beating this bitch. Yeah, yeah. I'm beating this bitch. Like, I'm not going to be that quiet kid anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I and I know this is getting deep, but like, I'm not I'm not going to be that that quiet fucking kid. Yeah, like, yeah. I was that kid. I was like, I was like, I'm not like when we're in a group. I'm not saying the stories. I'm letting the other guy say it. You know what I mean? I'm that guy. Yeah. Right. And I, I love hated it. that. And, and it was, and it was like, I had no confidence Yeah, yeah. because that was the issue. Like, like my biggest thing was if you can't, if you can't communicate like a lot of, um, if you, if you study or if, if you know any, anything about, um, anything about jails, uh. what they actually do is, um, most people that end up in jail have a low communication, um, you know, bar in their life. Right. They're, they're not the best communicators because right. what they do, you know, like, and I'm, I'm generalizing it, but what they do is they, is they have certain activities in, um, in, in jail because these guys, they don't know how to communicate their words. So guess what they do instead? They do some violence. They hurt. Uh. And what they do in jails, they actually have what's called an arts and crafts day. Huh, really? Oh, shit. Get them to draw uh, they get them to express themselves because when you can't fucking express yourself through words, it makes you angry. Uh, it makes you angry. Yeah. Like it made me bitter. It was like yeah. I'm talking to myself in my head. Yeah, I can't tell anyone. Like I'm the, like I grew up as the guy. I would say something, and I'd be talking to someone, and their eyes would be shifting back and forth. Like, uh, is this motherfucker going to end or uh, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> Like that's how I grew up, right? Wow. Uh, it's, I'm, God damn it! And then you have all this anger. You have all this like, God damn it! Is this who I really am? Right. Right. So rather than just like becoming a victim and saying, "Well, this is me. I'm the guy with the stutter," right. I'm like, I'm gonna do the hardest shit. Period. I'm a, I'm gonna go on full commission. Yeah. Motherfucker. Right. So <laughs> so it's like I don't pay my bills unless I sell. Exactly. And uh, I'm going to do the shit that no one else wants to do, which uh. is I'm going to go knock on doors in the freezing cold rain in the winter. Um, like I, I remember I was in Grand Prairie, Alberta, like n near none of it. where It was like negative 35. So I know I'm ranting, but uh, just no, that's I get good. very passionate about this topic, bro. <laughs> Dude, it's important because I like I like to illustrate to people a lot of the time, like a lot of people these days, especially now more than ever, not to get negative, but it's just like, a lot of people these days, they want to look for reasons to be the victim. They, they want reasons. They want excuses of why they're not succeeding or why they're not moving forward. And everyone has a reason, right? Oh, you don't know my story. You don't know my struggle. This is good to yeah. illustrate that like, no, you always have a choice. When you have a struggle yeah. or a barrier like you had, you had a speech impediment. Like, I mean, not only did you overcome that, you went like right at it. Like you did the hardest possible yeah. thing you could have done with that problem. You didn't go, let me get a job at Walmart and I could be an accountant where I want to talk much and I can still be successful. And Right, and that's what I fucking did. Yeah. Like I was like, you know what? I'm not speech smart. Like I right. can't really explain my words. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the Asian six pack in high school, which was chem, biology, physics, nice. advanced functions, calculus, and data management. And I'm like, I'm gonna be the smart kid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Where yeah. I don't talk to anyone except yeah. I just I just yeah, read and yeah, study all smart. day. Yeah. But I'm smart. So uh, and yeah, you don't... Bro, well, you know what? Yeah. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I like where it's like, going. It actually, runs, it actually runs in my family. Like this is this is actually much more important, right? Because when I'm getting guys, like I right now, the phase that I'm in for the business is I'm the recruiter. 
I'm the onboarder and, um, you know, I, I show them what I've done and I'm, I'm a living example of like what's fucking possible. Mm. Like I've, I've been in, I've been on full commission since I was, you know, what, what, you know, when I, like I was in neuroscience, wow. I was in neuroscience. I got my whole family sold on, I'm going to become a doctor. And, uh, I remember like, you know, like my non no is like talking to the, you know, back in Italy, my, my grandson is going to become a doctor. Oh, oh yeah. Oh shit. It's so beautiful. Oh shit. We did it. Right. Oh, to man. like, Hey, no, 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 I'm dropping out. Eh? Sorry about that. <laughs> so, um, and now you, know, you make more money. So there you go. I, well, that was that. Well, that was the biggest thing, right? Like if I, I don't have to, like, I was just talking to my, I was just talking to my accountant and, uh, it's just like she has like all these doctors that are are just, are just not the happiest, right? Like uh-huh. you know, because what they do is what they do is they they don't blow their twenties, but they invest their twenties uh. of like consistent uh. studying, educating tests, uh. like yeah, like you know, like studying for your MCATs is ridiculous, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And then and then when they and then when they hit thirty, right? Or you know, like again, I'm, I'm generalizing it, so I don't want like some people saying, "You well, that's not completely true." Yeah. I find, and then like, oh, you know, okay. in your thirties, you're working, you're working in the emergency room, right? Yeah, and you're, yeah. you know, and you get sold. You're supposed to get rich when you're four, whatever, right? And it's, it's, um, I, I, I just realized I was in it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I, yeah. I got sold dream, uh, for my parents to love me, and yeah. for my family to accept me. Yeah. I got to be a doctor, lawyer, or engineer, and if not, I'm a failure, hmm. right? And I. Uh, and I and I bought into that shit, right? And and, that, I, and then I realized, you no, know, I went through a fucking depression, right? See, so I, no, and that's what I mean. That and that's another perfect example. A lot of people are going through that. They're doing a career yeah. that they think they have to do because of other people's expectations. And once you get into it, and I'm like, I, see, I'll I'll say maybe what you're thinking, but won't say. I'm not speaking for you. Probably weren't thinking this, but like when I look yeah, at doctors, doctors are an important part of society, and I respect that. I actually think they should get paid a yes. lot more. The problem is yeah. that's not how the system works, and they're safe. not. And at the end of the day, they're still trading time for money, and there's no leverage in yeah. that. It's you work, you get paid. You work, you get paid. There's only so yeah. far that goes, right? And they unless you unless you open up multiple clinics, practice, right? Like exactly, that, and that's exactly. But then yeah. guess what? Now it's not about being a doctor; it's about being a businessman or woman, right? A businessman, business, a specialized right? businessman. Exactly. That's it. Hey, but you, but hey, listen. I knew I had a guy on here who made a lot of money. Um, he made a bet with his friends saying, oh, well, you can't be a doctor if you don't go to school. He goes, yeah, but I can do one better. And he bought all the medical practices in the city and just hired all the doctors in them and filled them all. And he goes, look, I have my own doctor's offices and practices. I make all my money in doctor's offices. And they go, oh, so you're a doctor. <laughs> okay. No, I just own them all. No, I'm a businessman. Right. Yeah, that's it. So the business, at the end of the day, the business is where you make money. And you, you can choose to leverage a skill to help that, fine. But if you're not going to, if you're just yeah. going to go into this practice as like, I'm a doctor, Man, yeah, that's a tough game, I mean, and you have high expectations to fill too. Well, I, I was going to talk about that because what I did, I was actually when I was at Brock, I went through this depression, this massive like I just was it the because my of biggest it? thing, it was well, it was I mean like you know like any fucking kid to spend eighteen G's in one year, and I and I think it's more right now, you know like like it's fucked, bro. Yeah. Like I remember at Brock, like just kids were killing themselves, you know, like one yeah. kid. Uh, yeah, just like we have literally our, I, when I when I went to Brock, I don't know if it's changed a suicide week. It was literally called suicide week wow. where the whole took the week off. And um, because it was the most common week when kids committed suicide, they could have probably renamed that a little better. Yeah, I know. They call it suicide week. Like, like, like looking back, I'm like, uh, it is it is what it is. But that's ridiculous. But wow. yeah, like you have all these kids. Right. And, you know, I you know, all all this pressure of like, they're trying to find themselves right now. They don't know Mm -hmm. who they are. And they're going through this, like this pressure of like, figure out your shit and don't fuck this up because we're spending lots of money. And, and that's why like, that's why I'm so passionate about what Yessa believes in. Right. So if you've seen the the, uh, post with uh, Corey, who kind of explains Yessa, um, I'm, I'm, I'm very passionate because our system is is broken. Like it's not even a question. Like the system is broken I, I do, I do a lot of interviewing. So, you know, just seeing, just seeing all these, um, all these people coming in for interviews and, you know, they got degrees and, you know, they're, they're trying to find a job and they're, I can't find anything in my field. Right. So, and the system's kind of broken right now. So what Yesa kind of preaches is like, we want to teach people to become their own boss. So I, I don't know if Corey kind of broke it down, but like, you know, like the, the best time to kind of explain it is like we are an entrepreneurship school. 
Yeah. And we want to build entrepreneurs. Yeah. Right. So Darren, let me ask you this. If I go, so, you know, eight out of 10 businesses fail within the first, um, three years, 80% of businesses fail. They, they go bankrupt. They don't got any money. They just, they, they just go under. Let me ask you this, Darren. Do you know why? They don't sell. Well, we have a line. They don't sell. They don't sell. If you ask, if you ask, if you ask, like uh, I, I get a lot of guys uh, from different business schools. They go, lack of capital is the reason why, mm. or it was the wrong timing in the marketplace mm -hmm. with the wrong industry. No. Nope. And sure, like if you want to say there is some truth to that, love that. That's all good. Um, but you know, like our, our biggest thing is, uh, if I can teach you on how to become a salesperson, if I can teach you how to be like, hello, my name is Darren. This is my product right. suit, uh, social yeah. buy it. And then the other person's like, Darren, I would love to buy it. <laughs> Plug, right? Plug right if there. I can teach you how to do that, I can teach you essentially how to become a CEO. Because what's a CEO? A CEO is a CEO is a glorified salesperson. Mm -hmm. He's selling a, a vision to a team. Yeah, right. To work for him and to show up to work five days, six days a week. Ideally, you want them working, you know, as uh, as hard and as passionate yeah. as you are. Dude, you gotta sell them on on the on the um, you know what Sue Social actually um, right. is in. Right. You gotta sell the market to buy your products. You gotta uh -huh. sell it people to system. It's all just a really big sale. And instead of you going into the marketplace and starting your own AZ plumbing company that no one knows about that has no credibility, we say we have a program where you can go step by step, by step where we start you off uh, you know, for, with Miss Jones at the door or at the mall, and we then we show you how to sell a dealer principal owning three, you know, owning ten dealerships, uh -huh. where you know the you know the contract like Andrew closed a six hundred thousand dollar contract. Wow. That's so it's crazy. knowing how to, I can teach you how to do this. So it's an $85 uh, deal, which is internet, TV and phone. Um, you know, you have, you have Bell, right? You're paying 200 bucks full rate. Here's the same thing for a two year promotion, whatever, right? Knowing how to do that, I can teach you how to level up and not at a retail store where they're saying, hello, Darren, can I please buy your product? Like I'm not, I'm not talking about someone that knows how to sign someone up. I'm talking order about takers. order takers. I'm not talking about an exactly. order taker, right? Like yeah. I have guys that go, well, I have retail sales. Yeah. I love that. But do you actually know how to go to someone who's busy, mm. who's driving Sally to soccer practice, mm. who has a lot of shit going on, who didn't expect you to show up at their house, you know, unexpectedly and stop what they're doing and give you their full attention and uh, get them finally to get them to say yes. Mm. And do that four, five, six, seven times in a day. Yeah. If I can teach you how to do that, I can teach you how to do something, and that's kind of you know, uh, you know, like a basic concept that we'll yeah. do over here. And I love, I mean, yeah. And for anyone, just for context, like for anyone who doesn't understand, uh, Daniel works with Yessa. And if you want to know more about Yessa, uh, like Daniel said, I had Corey Leaf, who's the CEO and president of Yessa, uh, do a whole podcast explaining that. But I think the the basic principle here, of Yessa, if I like really dumbed it down, just in a simple version, is. Basically, they're creating great salespeople and they're doing that by bringing them in and starting them at the most basic level of sales, doing door-to-door, -door, the essentials, the foundation. And then, I guess, what? Graduating from there to something more complex, to something more complex, to something more complex um, until they yep. either go out on their own, I guess, and build something or end up working for someone like Grant Cardone Canada or something like that, correct? Yeah, of course, right? Yeah, and so, I'm, I'm so passionate because I started as someone that, mm. you know, couldn't even say his name. Exactly. Daniel. So that so sales changed your life, and so it makes perfect sense that you're in a role now where you're going to help others change their life with sales. Well, because I understand, I understand what it's like. Right. You know, I wasn't the uh, you know the popular kid in school. So, so anyway, would, would you recommend? So just on this on this note, just for the because I didn't want to touch on two parts, and the first one is is people getting into sales. These young guys, young girls, someone right now yeah. maybe listening. They're in school for I don't know. Let's say something. Not to rip on HR, but I know you guys don't love HR. So let's say they're in school for HR management, which is what my girlfriend does. Um, she hates it. She doesn't love it. Um, but <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, she's not a corporate type person and a lot of people aren't. But let's say they're in school for HR and they're doing that um, and yeah. they're just not loving it and they're not liking it and they, they, they 
are not happy who they're becoming. They're not happy with their earning potential. They're not motivated by it. Is sales yeah. something that anyone could consider or would they have to be a special kind of person? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people have this notion of, you know, well, you, you're so charismatic, you know, you know, you know, you're so, you know, you're always such a good, uh, people person. Right. And, um, you know, I, sales is everything. Yeah. Like the reason, you know, the reason why I was unhappy with my life growing up is I didn't know how to sell, which mm -hmm. is how to get your words across and get someone to actually agree with it. Right. Yeah. That's why, you know, again, like going back to the, to the jail, they weren't able to express how they really felt and get someone to agree with you. Mm. And what happens is they built up all this anger and they didn't know how to, you know, and, and that's the whole idea. So I think everyone should go through sales. Like everyone, everyone needs to go through, um, rejection and everyone, it, it, you know, like for me, it gets you humbled, uh -huh. like knocking on someone's door um, and believing in a product, right? And I'm, I'm not selling, like, I'm not selling something that's illegal. I'm not selling something that's a scam or, right. or something that's, you know, harmful to someone. Like, something that's actually, like, legit. Uh. Like, like we, sell, we sell internet. Uh. Like, buddy, you, buddy, you got internet, right? Uh. Right. How much you pay in a month? Let's do a, let's do a speed test. Right. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to times it by five. Right. right? Okay, great. And, and it's going to be, it's going to be 50 bucks less for two years. Or uh. it's going to be 30 it's going to be 25 bucks less for two years. You get a free router. It's a $5 install, right? It's a no-brainer. Here's the concept of that. It's like, it's like a no-brainer, right? Yeah. I think everyone everyone needs to go through that um, because it's going to build. Like I, I almost comp I compare it to like working out. You know, to build muscle, Darren, what do you have to do to your muscle? You Look have to. Out, but you have to actually break the muscle tissue. yeah. yeah. So what happens is someone has this level of confidence and this level of communication mm. and to go and build it back up, you actually have to, just like working out, you got to, you got to yeah. tear that, that, that damn muscle. Right. Mm. So, um, you know, like the best, you know, how I've gone, like I've done, I've done about 2000 sales out the door. Right. I would say about two, like I've seen, I've seen literally everything. And, you know, just like, just like the muscle and communication, you break it down and then once it's broken down, you're like, you're almost like worse than when you first started. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like, it's like working out, right? Yeah, you're like sore. And you're worse. You're like, fuck, yeah. I can't move. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, you know, and that's actually a good thing. Yeah. Because to build something, you, you got to break something. Right. And then what happens is you, so just like, so just to kind of go back to what you were saying, the reason why this is so good is everything improves in your life. Huh. Like, if you, like, I'll ask you this, Darren. What do you think would improve if you got better in sales? Like, what strengths do you think would improve? Oh, it's it's oh my god, it's everything, right? Because I can I can see that in myself. I mean, just to make it in business at all, you either figure out how to sell or you or you don't make it. So I've noticed just that relationships get better with your partner, with your mm. friends, with your family, right? Shop mm. simple things, you know, just shopping, like just going to buy something yep. anywhere gets better. Bargaining. Um, right. Bargaining. Uh, making connections and networking when you're going to events and you're actually making connections with others, being able to do that and form relationships, whether it's a, you're a student trying to get a job or you're a business owner trying to get a client, you can make those relationships, right? So every, even well, just speaking, by the way, that's a little, I think not a lot of people realize that. Uh, sales really helped me with public speaking. Like I somehow got on the first stage, ever, again, I've done a lot of speaking like in the US and Canada, like all over. And the first time I hopped on a stage, there was no nervousness and everything came out clear. And it's like, that's not normal. And that was because of sales. I was just so used to selling to people that didn't matter who yeah. I was in front of. Well, you're, you're, what you're doing, right? Like what you're doing is um, you're understanding people. Right. Like if I can understand, if I can get, because how do you make a sale? You can't, you can't argue with them. Mm -hmm. You can't make them wrong. Mm -hmm. You can't put them down. Like no one's going to say yes to you if you put me down. Right. Like we have a big thing, you know, never bash the competition. Right. Never be like, oh, well, they're shit. Uh -huh. Like, so what you're learning is the basic essentials right. of how to, um, yeah, like how to become an, I like not an ideal person, but someone that you would want to, that, that you like. Yeah. Cause I have to be liked. If I show up to a door, right. I got to be liked within a couple seconds. Yeah. What they're doing, like, you know, I always give this example. When you go knock on a door, 
and, and I'm like, Hey, how's it going? My name is Daniel with uh code, you know, like I'm with a, a Z company mm-hmm. and this is the products da 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 da. They're, what they're doing is they're looking at me up and down and they're scanning me mm. and they're like, do I like this person? Right. And it's knowing how to do that automatically. And it's then getting that initial like, okay, you know what? I'll give him a shot. And then it's hearing my words. And then, okay. I'll give him a shot. And then it's actually building a, a relationship and then it's getting, and then it's building authority. Like now I'm not just someone you like, but I'm someone that you trust. I'm someone that's credible and I'm someone that you would want to do business with, yeah. which means I'm someone that I'm an authority figure now. Mm-hmm. Right? It's mm-hmm. like, um, you know, like if I'm like, you know, it's, I hate using this example, but like a cop, right? Like if, if, if you were talking, I, I've never spoken like personally to a cop. I like the full on, <laughs> full on conversation. But what I'm guessing is a cop would be like, sir, I need you to please go over there. Right? And it's because the cop is the authority. Yeah. So, um, in sales, right, you always have the nice guy that doesn't know how to like, sir, um, yeah. ma'am, da, 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 let's, let's go over here. Ma'am, can you please sign right here? So, and then it's the next level is building that authority. And then that's, that's where confidence comes from uh, being likable and being someone where people want to say yes to you. Yeah. And that's the shit I never had, mm. which is why I went mad nuts. That's interesting. Cause, like, Cause I want to ask you that actually yeah. before I forget with confidence, that's actually something I want to ask you about. Do you believe that? Can people fake confidence or, because this is my belief and maybe yeah. I'm wrong, I yeah. believe that confidence comes from, I think anyone can build it, but I think it comes from repeatedly doing something over and over and over and proving to yourself that you A, don't quit and B, can eventually succeed at something and that eventually builds yeah. your confidence. Is that true or can you just fake it? So the question is, can you fake confidence? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's like, that's like, um, like that's, that's like looking at that. To me, you can fake it off the bat, mm. but like, I, you know, as human beings, a lot of people are socially smart right. um, because we because ha- we have to be because that's or else we won't survive. Uh-huh. <laughs> so we could read bullshit a mile away. Because most I, people have that. Most people have that. Yeah, because I asked that because I see a lot of young guys today being targeted by. Uh, whatever it is, this course or this program that just says we're going to help you get confidence in 30 days. I don't Mm. think you can really just, here's the trick to have confidence. I think that the trick is you have to do whatever you're doing enough and practice enough and role play enough and succeed a certain amount of times before you actually get Mm. real prolonged confidence. I don't think there's any method. It goes back, it goes back to the gym, Mm. right? Like the whole 30 day abs, like it just, it's just not a thing. Right. Right. So, um, yeah, it needs to take time. Like I, we can get you excited uh, for a exactly. little while, but, yeah. um, but no, but like it again, like it's, you know, like to me, I'm the biggest advocate of this. If you want to build something, the stage you're at right now you, that you need to smash that yeah. thing and actually go down a level. Yeah. So I need to break your confidence. Yeah. Cause I'll, you know, you know, like I'll see a lot of these guys and, um, you know, they'll work here for, you know, the, their first week was, is when I like kind of train them right. and then they go out there and they get their face slammed in. Like mm-hmm. whatever you're thinking, like whatever you're thinking, like, I don't know how people are in Barry, yeah, yeah. but whatever you're thinking <laughs> is they get their face slammed, bro. Like yeah, everything yeah, yeah. you can think of. And that's fine because yeah. you're dealing with the marketplace. Huh. That's who the marketplace is. Yeah. Welcome to reality. Right. So what happens is they come in here and they have a little bit of confidence and then what happens is they go out there and they get their face like just boom, 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 like F off, get a real job, you know, just, you know, then you also obviously, obviously, you know, it's not only that, but like you get some nice people and then guess what happens is you kind of go through the motions and then you get that one guy who's like, dude, I need your help. Thank God you're here. Were you listening to me? Were you listening to our dinner conversations? And then you show up. And then they make a sale and then it just, and then what happens is three months later, their confidence goes up uh, because what happens is banging out their confidence yeah. where they've been banging out. So like, like to learn something or to build anything, there's the learning of it, but then there's the actual doing this, which is the practical, which is, and that's kind of how you got to build it. So these courses, you know, where it's confidence in 30 days, I think it's great in theory, uh-huh. but the real confidence and is like go pick up that chick, go up right, to her, right, right, and get rejected, and right. then come back, because your pitch gets better over time. So, and and, and that's kind of like what works for you, right? Is, exactly. Uh, what happened is I just kept getting slammed at the door. Yeah, I'd yeah. be like, "Hi, my name is the the Daniel," 
And then I'd be like, God damn it, bro, you're so bad. <laughs> oh, God. And then I would start questioning myself, and I'm like, one more door, one more, you know? And I would just keep, <laughs> like, I swear to God, I'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, you know? shit. You know, you got my mom, like, what are you doing? Go to no, you know, like, go get a guaranteed, you know, thing. And I was on this mission yeah, yeah. of like, mom, I'm getting through this. Yeah. I don't care. I'm getting through this. And what happened is over time, I just got better and better at speaking and, uh, Wow. Dude, no, I, I love that. And I think there's so, I mean, wrapping that, that portion up here, I think there's two big things that came out of this. One, I'm going to say it, and I think it's that everyone at some point should experience sales. I think if you have any possible, I mean, unless you have no option for whatever reason, you can't. If you can physically make it happen, I think everyone should work sales at least once. I think it's something that everyone needs to see. It's something everyone needs to experience. And I think it's something that everyone comes out the other side better for as long as they follow through, right? And the yeah. other important thing here really is when you face adversity, and that's the big thing that you just kind of get, you have to run straight at it. When you have a problem, you can't work your way around, you can't find enough, you have to just hit the scariest thing straight on. And that creates a result yeah. like you just did, right? And that's the only way to go better. I think for all the young guys listening, that's two, and girls, I think that's two things I want them to take away from that, which is, Sales is extremely important and can be life-changing. And anytime you're facing adversity, you cannot run away. You cannot avoid. Do not do what's comfortable or what's expected of you. You have to run towards the discomfort. Would that be correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's, it's, it's you know, everyone has that, that demon, that thing that, that, that they, they don't want to look at. And that's exactly what they need to do. Boom. And that's what I kept telling myself. Is this, was, this, was the biggest, this is the biggest demon in my life. And if I can't, if I can't get through this, you know, you know, how am I going to be a good father down the road? Right. Like, how am I going to be a good, you know, business person? How am I going to be a good manager? Right. You know? Um, and then, you know, what's, what's crazy is like the next, once I kind of mastered this, um, I, I tapped into something within me, which was, I'm a natural leader. Right. Like I'm the, I'm the oldest, I'm the oldest, um, you know, I guess, um, I'm the oldest person within my family. So I'm the oldest cousin. You know, uh, I got two younger sisters. And I, I, I just realized as I start, because what happens is you first master this level. But that's good. But I got, I bought into this concept, which is what I've, I've always lived by this, right? And this is what a business person, this is how a business person thinks. Uh. Instead of getting paid off 100% of your efforts, right? Learn to get paid off 1% of 100 people's efforts. It's leverage. Right? And in a perfect leverage that was that was what really got me yeah. right because as what i've learned is you're going to master sales but the wealthiest people in the world they got leverage and then what i learned is how do i duplicate this in someone else right and that's that's the real trick right once you master that then you can start actually building a life where you know if anything happens to you you know yeah. you're not just uh, you're not just in trouble, right? So let's let's talk about this. I mean, let's let's now evolve this to I mean the original title, which let's take this a step farther. And actually, before I do that, by the way, we just got a comment. Yo, Dan from it's Yo, Dan from Telus. What up from yeah. Sal Judea? Judea. Nice. Do you know nice. him? What's up, Sal? Yeah, yeah, of course. What's up, Sal? <laughs> so How's he's going? he's tuned in, man. He's tuned in. He's locked in. Beauty. We Love got a that. few comments here. I'm just peeking out. We got Ryan Homer tuning in. Uh, but anyway, so I want to cut over to the big stuff here, which is now, okay, we have this whole concept of your story, the importance of sales, the importance of facing adversity. I want to level yeah. up now for all my business friends, my bigger business owner friends. I know there's some guys listening here that run some pretty big companies. Um, I want yeah. to talk about also now, because you, you just touched on it perfectly, leveraging. So for all the bigger companies, yeah. how can they leverage sales in their company, build a sales team, why would they want to do that? I want to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Grant Cardone, if anyone, I'm sure a majority of people that are watching this know about Grant. Mm -hmm. Grant always talks about this, right? Like he, for so long, he was just a small business owner. He, he said, I need to do everything, um, you know, because I can't trust anyone else. Exactly. And yes, there's obviously truth in that. Um, but if you think like that, you what you what you are is you're the employer and the boss right you're the you know you're the you're the worker and the manager right and it's yeah. 
that's not the reason why someone opens a business is so one day, you know, I always compare it to like, like a child, right? Mm. You know, it's like you, you, you take care of this baby and at the beginning, you know, you can't sleep at night, you know, you can't, you know, you're like just anxious 24 seven. Like I, you know, I've never actually had a kid, but I'm guessing, (laughs) You know, it's like, you know, you're, you're making sure like it's taking all your energy and it's like, you're at seven days a week and it's, you're going nuts and you're like, Oh my God. And you're, you can't sleep at night. Right. And you're only getting a couple hours and whatever. Right. And that's how the beginning goes. And what happens is over time that, that baby, this is the reason why someone should start a business, right? Cause over time that baby then becomes, you know, older and starts to become more independent. And then you got to like manage it still because you know, you need to guide it. Mm. And give it some rest because you know my you know and just whatever. And then what happens is you get to an age where then you get old, and that business then takes care of you. Right. That's right. the only reason why you want to build something. Yeah. But if you're a small business owner, and if you don't show up, you're your zero revenue for that day. Mm. That's that's an issue. Yeah. That's actually worse than having a job. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a job. You got like a pension. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. Benefits, like yeah, you know, yeah. you got vacation time. Yeah, like that's that's worse. Yeah. The only pro is you don't got someone micromanaging mm. you. That's why you know a, a lot of people actually go into it, right? Because they, I want to have control. I don't want someone overlooking me, right? I don't want that corporate, right. you know, type of type of world to live in where it's a bunch of politics, right? Um, so that's, that's the other reason, but yeah, that's, that is the main reason. So everyone needs to master this yeah. guy. Like, like when we started, you know, when I first, when I first came over here from BC and I came to Hamilton, um, like that was it. I was like, I, I'm going to master this game and I'm going to duplicate it. And mm-hmm. my first actual rec- recruit was my sister's boyfriend. Um, and literally I just, he was, he was, what was he, he was 20 at the time. 19 at the time and I just downloaded myself into him and I said okay so I would so I, I took him under my wing by the way he was born in Colombia he wasn't even he wasn't even, wow. well he raised raised in Colombia yeah, so yeah. And so English is, is, his, is his first language yeah. and um, you know I you know like I first learned how to go knock on someone's door because I always knock doors in BC right and never really learned like the game over here in Ontario is different right not not different not completely different, but it's definitely, you know. Um, in what way? Like, do you, do you think are they more aggressive here, or are they more like violent? <laughs> the best line to use would be hostile. Ah, but it's because of the traffic. Yeah, like, <laughs> dude, the four hundred one. By the like, time they get home, these people rip- are just wired. Piss, bro, piss. <laughs> like, I I was living in Burlington, which I thought was relaxing. Um, and then I moved to Grimsby and I'm like, now I get it. Like I just moved, I, I, I we just bought a place in Grimsby yeah. and I'm um, like, go outside, you know, like one car, like one car is driving out. You know, it's just, it, it's, it's a mm. different type of vibe. All the neighbors are waving at each yes. other. And now in B, right? Like, that's why know, I live up and here, that was the, the I was, when I, when I moved from Scarborough, cause that's where I, that's where I was Ooh. raised, um, yeah. to BC. Yeah. And I remember I was in, uh, I was in, where was I? I was in Kelowna mm. and, uh, I'm like, everyone's like, Oh, Hey, how's it going? And I'm like, you talking to me or you're talking to the guy behind me. And I just wasn't used to that. Right. I just wasn't, used, I was yeah, like, yeah. you know, cause I would, I would always just have like my Scarborough look on oh, like, buddy, in Scarborough, oh, yeah. like right. Like that's, and I'm, cause that's what you're used to. That's the bubble. Yeah. Right. So when I, when I went out to BC, so anyway, it just, it, people are, People in Ontario are very like fast paced, which is can, which can be a good thing, yeah. because um, um, people like to make decisions fast. Yes, it's like, yeah, dude, this sucks. Fix it. Go. Uh-huh. Whereas in BC, you know, and again, like you can't really compare a Hamilton to a Vancouver because they're two different places. Right. Um, but um, for sure, like the small towns, it just it's you know like in BC, like the different uh, the mountains, the air, the ocean, like it just it just a different vibe. Def- and that's the so, whole reason I moved to Barrie, by the way, because it, it's a, it's this package where it has this lifestyle. It has water, so I can be on the boat all the time. Uh, I my, love it, dude. My place is literally two and a half minutes from my office. I have no commute. It's 
it's wild, man. Grimsby is very similar, very yeah. similar to that. Mm. So now, now, now I just got to get a boat too. So you got to get a boat. But, that's, uh, that's the big one. <laughs> but no, that's man. Like one. to 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 add. So um, I learned the game, and then I, you know, I, I brought my my sister's boyfriend along with me, and you know, I've always learned this. I, I you know, I did this. I did this. I I, I was in network marketing for about two years. So. Mm. About a year and a half, and I got you know that's. I did Vima. I, I don't oh, know. Oh yeah. Too much. Sold some Verve. But I was, I was the naive kid. I yeah. was like, Yo, dude, were you were you part of Vima or, or no? No, no, no. I had no. a lot of friends that were trying to recruit me for like six oh, years. Oh god, that was me, man. That was me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I had platinum in the company. Wow. Um, so which was like one percent. So I actually, well, oh, I don't even want to talk about the car because I got the car. And then, you know, I'm like, dad, we just, I just had this rank. The whole team's looking at me. I got to go. And I'm like 20, right? I was, I was yeah, 20. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, all right. Or, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting the three series. Yeah, I wish yeah, I had my, yeah. uh, yeah. got my three series. And then like, like in five months later, dad, uh, <laughs> I'm not in the rank anymore. They're not paying me 400 gone, bucks a gone. month. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. yeah I remember so that. It, that was, that was, well, a big thing with that is that's what really like opened my eyes to yeah. a lot of things, but uh, I do want to go back yes, to what uh, we were uh, talking about. So with so with uh, with uh, my sister's boyfriend, yeah. I brought him on, and um, and I would just show him like you know this is it. I would go knock on the door, and then I would go knock on the door, and then you know I would get rejected, and then I would go make a sale, and then he would see make the sale. How I would interact with the customer, right. and this is this is what everyone needs to do is they need to learn how to duplicate themselves. Mm. If you don't know how to duplicate yourself, you're you're in big trouble. So I did that, and then I showed him a couple of sales, and I said, "Okay, dude, now it's your turn." Nice. And I just let him free. Nice. And I literally, like, I, I knocked with him for about an hour and a half, and I said, "Go!" And then uh, he actually made two sales that day, wow. and confidence like this, yeah. Wow. And uh, so what he did is he went into a, you know, and then he went into a house. He gave me a call, and then uh, you know, and it's and, and and then it became like this this. Thing of me duplicating myself into him and then he was duplicating himself into other people and then yeah. he got a full-fledged business so i want to i want to break this down to like real practical tangible steps that any small business or big business right now listening can take so to the business that does not yet have a sales team they are the ceo is the salesperson like me like my biggest flaw is we don't have anyone selling but me like i've integrated my team into the uh the early stages like like we talked about before like having a booker so my team will do initial calls initial like we, we call them exploration calls it's basically a booking call or a qualifying call uh but the closing the sales is still all done by me so a business like me where yeah. do they start do i just go out and find you know one salesperson and then how do i train them do i build it do i hire someone else to build it do i hire 10 sales yeah. guys at once and make them compete like where do i start give me the steps yeah at least there's obviously gradients to it darren mm. right so um, cause if you just say, do what I do, right. it, it's, it's, it's too much. Like mm. they're going to get scared off and they're going to be like, Darren, I, I'm not a Darren. Right. This is the, this is, this is the biggest problem is you don't like a lot of people just don't know how to gradient them up to right. go from, you know, like Darren can go down to his level and say, listen, I know it's tough right now. Mm. We're going to take you st- and I'm going to hold your hand every step of the way. Yeah. So for someone like yourself, mm. um, you know, you're the salesperson, right? Yeah. So you're you're, you're the one closing closing the deals, closing right? Closing all the deals, so, man. So the way my advice and what I would say is, you got to have a gradient to get to your level. Mm. So so let me ask you this: like, what would be what would be a lower level to then closing the deals? Because in my eyes, you know, you could have a demo booker. Yeah. So we have that. Guys. That's so we we started with I, that. So I, I have. Don't. So one of my account managers, she'll do. We have a two-step sales process, so they hop on a 15-minute call. If they qualify through yeah. that, they get on a call with me. So I have someone that does yeah. that first call. That's what I got. That's, That's it. it. And 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 you got to get someone to master that. But should I don't that know be a dedicated guessing, job? or Because right now it's someone who's… Cause at I the think, beginning. At the beginning until that can be replaced. Right. Okay. Because what, what you want to do is you want to get someone to that first level mm. and however long that takes, and then you want to then replace someone yeah, with that. Yeah. Um, like, like again, this is if you want to build a big business, right. this is how the guys at, at GC do it. They got a demo booker yeah. and then they got a closer, right. something, something on those lines. Right. Right? right. So yeah, like you want to have someone when they first start off, just get them a big thing of what I've, you know, what I've learned is if they don't win, they don't think they can do it. 
So get them to win, like get them to speak to someone who's interested and just get them to book a date. Right. To, they're winning there right. and get them to do that over and over and over and over yeah. again. And then, you know, uh, show them, okay, well, this is what I do now. So then, then you, you know, then book it and then show them, then you hop on the call on the demo with that, whoever it would be, right. then close the deal, right. show them how the presentation would go, mm. show them how the fact find would go, show them how, you know, handling all their objections and concerns would go, right. and then show them how the close would go. Then close the deal, send them the service agreement or send them the contract, get them to sign it, and get your junior to watch you do it all. Yeah. And then do that a couple times, and then, you know, you're, cause again, like your goal is, um, your goal is to build them the map. Right. They're not going to map themselves. Mm. So if you're like, buddy, go figure it out. No. I'll no. see you later. how it goes, man. Like you're, you're shit out of luck. Yeah. So your job is to like, you know, cause essentially you basically have a roadmap there. Right. You just have to like actually put it or, you yeah. know, you just have to actually put it on, on paper. Right. And then right, get right, them right. to watch it and then say, all right, man, we booked you this date. Right, right. I'm gonna. Be here. I can, you know, I can be here to help you out, mm -hmm. get close a deal, and then it's blood. Then they've tasted blood. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. always, always, right? Like, yeah, yeah. they're like a shark. Like, get them to taste blood. They right, don't know what right, blood tastes right, like. Like, Darren right. knows. Darren knows what blood tastes like. <laughs> Darren knows what a big deal tastes like, yeah, though. Yeah, yeah. I want more of this. I want yeah. more deals. Yeah. Right. You got to get them. You got to get them hooked on that blood, right? Mm. <laughs> they was about to get them hooked on that blood, which is like. This is what a fuck, and then they get what's called the sales high. Then they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "I'm, I'm, I'm king over here." Yeah, you need to get them to that phase because then once you have them at that phase, mm. then you get actual business rolling and flowing. Right. Then you get you get you get someone to duplicate that. Right, right, right. Junior becomes a senior who is now taking your hat, mm. and now he's training others. But it's your job, Aaron, to actually build out that roadmap. This is this, you know, like in the, in the fact, so I don't know how your presentations go, mm. but these are the questions I ask. Mm -hmm. This is how I explain the product. Mm -hmm. This is how my trial closes, you know, well, what do you think? Would you recommend this one or would you rec or, you know, would you rather have this, um, you know, this proposal or this, you know, what, what does it look like? Get them to get ownership of it and then get them to close it and then actually build that out. Okay. okay, got it. So if I break this down, I want to make this super simple for everyone listening. So step one, you should be hiring a salesperson. That's a given. That's that's the basic here. Period. Every business. Period. And, and that's why, by the way, like I'm using myself as an example not to talk about me, but I think a lot of businesses are similar to me. A lot of small businesses, you have a few employees, you're growing. Um, so it doesn't matter if they're an accounting company or a marketing company or, or a product-based or a trades company, like a plumbing company or a construction company. They yeah. should hire a salesperson. That's step one, Okay. Step two, you're saying we got to have a system in place. So we have to have some sort of roadmap, uh, a gradient to step that person up. Where do they start? Where do they get to? And how do we hit that? So then the next logical question becomes this. If I'm a business and I hire my sales guy and I build this process, well, how does he actually get people to get on the phone with? Do I give them the leads? Do they generate their own leads? Let's talk about that. Mm, yeah, I mean, again, like it's, it's a gradient, right? Like you got to get, when you first start out, it's your job to hold their hand, right? So, so, so let me get this right there. And so your question is like, what's their pay or are you saying their leads? Like what is the, what is the, what no, is I the want question? To know, so I'm the business owner. This is the logical question I think a lot of people will have. I hire the salesperson. I now have a little bit of a pressure to make sure this salesperson gets fed, meaning deals got to be coming in. Do they go get their own deals or do I have to get as the business owner? Do I have to feed them those deals? The, the first, the first question, bro, is get them to fucking win. Mm. get them again like going back to that concept get them to taste blood mm -hmm. you know you know you're you're creating a higher gradient or a harder way to do it if you're like all right buddy you're hired go find your own leads right you need to i would start them off um feeding them leads right some warm leads um, like maybe they've come in through some warm marketing leads. yeah Get them, yeah, get them, get them to win, get them to win and then do it. And then once they actually have the confidence, right. then you say, okay, buddy, go close your own deals. Mm. Right. Or, you know, the warm leads I'm giving you right now, it's going to be 50, 50. Yeah. 
and then go go find your own needs, right? But yeah, like you got to like get them to, you got to get them to win at the beginning however yeah, you yeah. do it. Yeah. You got to get them hooked. Yeah. Because if you just get them in cold, um especially if they're especially if they're brand new in sales, mm. um you know, and it's again like or if you hire someone that's a lot more senior, that's a different conversation. You might be asking for more money though. Yeah. At the same time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, like, uh, right. So you, you, you like, you got to also realize that it's yeah. going to be some, a lot of experience because then he's going to want more, more money. Sure. Right? Yeah, and I mean, and that's why, like, and that's why I ask this quick. I think this is very important too because, like, a lot of guys will talk about sales and how important it is. But when it comes to like being a business owner, the mind is always on. Okay, well, how is adding that salesperson making me money, and what do I got to do to make sure they can make me money? So even if I hire the best sales guy in the world. Um, I still got to know, is he going to be doing outbound all day? Is he going knocking doors and making cold calls? Or is it more efficient if I'm generating leads for that, that, you know, expert closer and he's just doing his thing? Cause like, I'm a big proponent personally. Um, I think the ideal scenario is if you can, and maybe I'm biased because I'm in the marketing world. If you can have a steady stream of leads for your sales guys, have leads that for sure. come in that they can call and call and call. Of course. You have to do any cold calling, right? Ideally. No. Right. You want to make it as easy as possible. Right, right. Like even for us, like we don't do um, – like we obviously like it's cold calling, but we kind of generate some type of leads. Exactly. Like we say these are, these are leads that are with us. These are leads that are, are not with us. So right. you need to give them structure exactly. no matter what, yeah. especially at the beginning. Like building up something where you don't really have any salespeople right now, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like if you're, if you're a Grant Cardone and you have all this experience and – you're hiring the best of the best. You're like, go find your own leads. I'm not giving you any. Yeah, yeah. That's a different story. But mm. if you're starting off brand new, um, you should 100% be generating yeah. leads. You should make the life as easy as fucking possible. Right, right, right. Like as a salesperson, what is my job? This is my job. I'll get it done. Right. As soon as you start adding in, we got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. Too much you start to overcome yeah. too much at once. Yeah. And then it's like, uh, I, I, I'm not a salesperson or mm. I can't do this. So that's when you hear people say sales isn't for me. That's the famous line. That's it. Sales isn't for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's you don't know your pitch. Yeah. You don't know your presentation. Yeah. You don't know how to handle a customer. Yeah. You don't know how to handle objections. Mm. Right? And that's it. Like if you want to get them solid, like what are what are the common like once you start to build out your presentation, you know, and and you know, Corey's a genius at this. Like build out objection handles for objections that usually come up like and there's only about 10 to 15 different objections you're really going to get right you know well you know maybe next quarter uh not in our budget right now you know uh, i don't think the person that's mm. going to actually buy it you know wants like whatever right yeah, and yeah, you, yeah. You, you actually you literally it's like you bring up the objection and this is what a sales professional is you bring up the objection before and then you handle it before they bring it up so now you're on, you're not on defense, mm. right? Like something, you know, something that, you know, you would say, you know, with, um, the job, like, like I would say is, you know, um, you know, you know, um, you know, I'm sure you, I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're not going to be interested. I, I, I just came to your house right now. I mean, if you were interested, you'd be knocking on my door. Probably, probably wouldn't be, wouldn't be knocking on yours, you know? Exactly. And, and to be real, sir, you don't have any, you don't have enough information to even be interested. Yeah. Uh, period. Yeah. So that's, that's actually my job. And guess what I just handled? Mm, Tim gotcha. saying, yeah. "I'm I'm not I'm not interested." Exactly. Right? Or or I'm or I'm happy with exactly. what I have right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so what you're so what you're, you know? Of course you're happy. Yeah. If you weren't happy, you would have been with us already. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. exactly yeah. why I'm here. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up, sir. You're preemptively and, addressing you know, it. Yeah. Which takes and, the power and this away. Is, and this and this is the issue when you hire a junior. Yeah, yeah. The junior doesn't know this shit. Yeah. The junior is just like, hello, uh, you know, and he's following, uh, hello, I am calling from da 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 company and auto, you know, and it's, they're reading the word for word and it's your job to give them all the words at the beginning right. and then and playing and then you start practicing. And then the, you know, the, the biggest thing is ensure that they totally believe in the product, mm. right? Like maybe he's talking to the customer on the phone and he's crappy but you get him talking about anime and he's so passionate about it right he's like ever so the second thing is is he even sold on your product right because nothing else will matter if he's not sold on it and and, and that's where you kind of come into play yeah 
And then it's your job. It's again, we're back to the baby example. It's your, you're putting full energy into this guy constantly. Right. Like what I, I'm a little obsessive. Like I'll call all my leaders in the morning. Good morning. <laughs> How's your sleep? What are you doing this morning? <laughs> you don't have to go to the office for a couple hours. You up? Oh you gonna hit the gym? God. Like I'm not like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. A dude, like I, and because what? Because I'm a, I'm obsessed with their growth at yeah. work and outside of work. And like yeah. you know, it's not, right? Like I'm ensuring that they're leveling up all aspects of life. So big thing, like even running this team, like. I'm ensuring, you know, like I have a big line, what happens at work is a reflection of what happens outside of work. Mm-hmm. So if, you're, if your weekend is you're messing around and, you know, maybe you're getting drunk, you're getting high, you're, you know, you're doing, you're just doing unethical things, right. you're, 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 you're not really growing yourself, right. it's going to show up, show up on Monday morning. Right. So. Ooh, that's so true, man. That is so true. I love that you're obsessive like that with your guys too. That's cool. Obsessed. That's cool. Oh, and I and like like get mad at me. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get mad at me when I when I first hired, or well, when we first brought on my sister's boyfriend. Mm. Uh, I I lived with him. Wow. Because I'm like I'm like I'm gonna be in your head twenty four seven. Dear God. And like, <laughs> like but I'm I'm crazy. Yeah, like yeah. again, like I was also at a stage where it was do or fucking die. Yes. Yeah. 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 It was, I either do this or everything, yeah. I could lose everything. Yeah, yeah. When, you, when, you, when you're in that stage, yeah. you're, you're fully committed. This yeah. isn't a five-day five adjust. Yeah. This is a seven. Now, again, with the junior, it's a little bit different. And it was obviously a little bit different with myself. Like, right. I was going to make him a leader. I was going to, you know, like, right, set right, it right. out, right? Right, right, right. So, but it's, yeah, like, you want to find someone who's hungry, mm. and then you want to build into that person. Got and it. then he becomes passionate as soon social as you are. Got it. Yeah. And that, and that's, and I think that's, that's transformative to any business. So step one uh, is obviously hire your salesperson. Step two is build out your processes and how you're going to build them up and train them. Uh, step three is to figure out how to replicate and scale those guys. And step four is yeah. hire suit social to make sure you have enough leads to feed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's, that's, like, that's the seven figure process. That's, that's the seven, and like, you know, the biggest thing is culture. Yeah. Huge. Like culture is like, like what, like we have, you know, a big thing that works with us is card on you, right? Like mm-hmm. we're obsessed with it, right? I've, I've done it like five times. Yeah. And um, it's again, like you're constantly, you're constantly learning. You're, and, 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 you know, as a leader, they're, you know, a big line that we always say over here is um, someone who you're mentoring or leading, they're going to take um, 50% of your good habits and about 100% of all your bad habits. Wow. That's right? good. I like that. So is that the first time that you heard that? Well, I gotta say that one more time. Yeah. One more time. I gotta <laughs> this hear is, this, time. this big line. This is a big line that we say. Your team will take fifty percent of your good habits, mm. right? And maybe if you're lucky, they'll take sixty, and they'll take a hundred percent of all your bad habits. Wow. That's is so is that true. the first time that you, that you heard that? Yeah. I, I've heard that like I don't know how many times. Yeah. That line has stuck with me. Because I'm wow. in the I'm in the I'm in the 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 growing teams business or whatever you want to call it mm-hmm. where I'm the leader and I'm duplicating myself and when, and now I'm leading I'm leading teams right and I'm in a position where they're looking at me 24 seven like what are you doing right like you know like if I was not that I don't but if I'm like popping bottles on a Saturday night and oh, Friday God. night I know yeah I know right and they're obviously I'm it. not but I yeah. know, I'm gonna go do that yeah. Hundred percent. You know, if I'm, you know, if and it's like, dude, like, if I'm hitting the gym, a couple of them will. Yeah, right? exactly. I know, like, but I know if I start popping bottles at the club, yeah. I know, you know, more of them would be like okay with it, right? And then they'll start, they'll we'll start, start posting on Instagram. Like it's, they're because they're because first off, we have a line, right? I'm talking about a lot of lines, mm. which is who do you listen to, right? Someone that has what you want and has been in your shoes. And then what you do is once you find that person, you then copy that person, right. essentially, basically, right? So that's how we all, that's how we, that's how we do it here, yeah. right? So based on that, we have a culture of you, you do what you success leaves clues. Right. You do what they, you know, if you say they say you do what they do, you're gonna get what they get. Period. Yeah. So 
back to that 50%, they're going to copy all my bad habits. If I'm smoking, yeah. they're all smoking. Yeah. Maybe not all of them. Yeah. They're smoking. Yeah. If I'm, um, if I'm rolling out of bed to the office and I have bed hair, yeah, or if yeah, I haven't yeah, gotten a hair, yeah. 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 best believe yeah, yeah, if yeah. my shirt is an eye, like I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always want to be the best here mm. because I love Guess what? I start showing up in a t-shirt and jeans. Yeah, Obviously, yeah. I, I won't. Yeah, yeah, I will. But that'll be the move. <laughs> <laughs> it's obviously it's a yeah. little bit different, yeah. but we obviously they're going to be copying me. They're be, they're going to be copying if I'm swearing all the time. Best believe they're swearing. Yeah, yeah. Right. If I'm, uh, you know, if I'm drinking ten coffees, it, it's this is, and this is, uh, and this all comes down to now building up a junior. Right. They're copying because 100%. they know what well, if I do if I do what Darren does, yeah. I'm gonna get what Darren has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can right? see that especially so, with the negatives, by the way. Like and I think also cute. what's really important that is there's this little secret like subsect of that, which is even if you do the good habits, if no one knows you're doing them, like if your team doesn't see you or know, they're just they don't know. They're assuming they're not being done. So like if you have great habits like reading every day, maybe make that known or do it with your team or make sure like do it in a way that they all know. So, hey, guys, we're doing a book a month. What book are you picking this month? I'm doing it with you. Let, let's yeah. meet every day and read a page out of this, which I've seen yeah. you guys do uh, with Grant Cardone books, which is pretty cool. Writing out our goals. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. we're all doing Of course. Love it. They're going to follow the leader. Yeah. Like, and this, and this all goes back to school, right? Mm. Like, I don't believe our generation is fucking lazy. Right. I just believe they're just getting advice from the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so now it's going back to now I got to get, now we preach, we get advice from the right people. Right, right. So you get advice from the right people. So it all goes back to that. They're going to start copying that mm. and it becomes a cycle. But watch out for those bad habits, dude. Like watch it. out because they will literally, they look up to you. Like yeah. Darren, like you're the CEO. Yeah, yeah. it'll destroy your business. He's looking up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Darren's, Darren's paying me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course I'm looking up to him, right? He's so young. He's yeah. so handsome. Yeah. Hey, but, look at uh, that. I'll take it. Hey, come on, bro. Right? But um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah no, like they're, I... they're copying all aspects. Yeah. And they're watching you when you don't even think they're watching you. It's crazy. Period. Even they're, your social they're, media dude, for always... sure. Oh, oh my yeah. goodness. They're watching what you're posting, what you're talking about, where you're dude, going. Yeah. Everything. Oh, you know, like like even even the way you walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll correct, I'll correct some guy's posture. Abdullah, wow. I always crack his posture. <laughs> like, bro, like, like, are you gaming? Yeah, Why is yeah. your posture like this all the time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm like, put your back straight, right? And yeah, it's, yeah. and I, I've learned this from a lot of my mentors, right? And 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 Corey's Corey's a big one of that. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, like people are gonna, you know, a people are gonna judge a book by its cover. So wear a pretty cover. So 100%. how are you looking? You know, but um, yeah, dude, they're 100%. copying you, and they're and they're um. Yeah. A big thing is your words and your mindset. Yeah. A big thing is that like they're 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 gonna they're gonna start thinking the same way you, you know you think like like for us right if we come if you're training a guy in sales and you're like oh these fucking leads suck oh they're gonna hates. adapt that yeah they're gonna adapt it period yeah 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 yeah, yeah. or oh god like fuck man they such a or even like. If I even come in, I'm like, oh my god, I'm having such a bad day with my girlfriend, guys. I just don't want to talk right now. Then they do the same shit. Yeah, they do the same shit because guess why? They can then justify it too. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, Daniel had a bad day with his girlfriend, so uh, you know, like if I ever go, you know what, guys, I'm taking the day off. I'm, uh, I got some issues going back home. They're they're, they're they're gonna copy that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway and that and that dude that's honestly yeah i know like we'll, we'll wrap it here but that that last thing is so like all everything you said is so true like i've experienced all that as a leader like i didn't have formal leadership training um i didn't have mentors early on i i, I just took the time spent the money made the mistakes fell on my face and i learned everything you just said and it's so true and even to this day i'm improving on that um and i'm realizing the nuances of that because that goes like even deeper than we're explaining which is like it's really not just what you do, but how, how do you relay that? How do you communicate that? How do you make sure they're all in line with that? And you're not, so for example, like even I got to get better at this because I'll come in later in the day, a lot, <laughs> right? Like I'll come in later, different hours. Um, because obviously I know I'm doing stuff like whether I'm running errands for the business or I'm doing calls or I'm taking meetings or I'm meeting with like, yeah. I'm doing something, but I'm not here. 
but they don't necessarily know why. They just think, oh, Darren's not coming in, right? So, Darren's sleeping in. Right, he's sleeping in, right? And then when I stay here, it's like 10 o'clock. <laughs> they don't know I'm here till 10 o'clock. They think I'm leaving, you know, 20 <laughs> minutes after them at five or something. And so it's like, Greg, that has Darren, to be you, communicated. Darren, brag, brag, dude. Yeah, exactly. Brag. Exactly. Because especially for Instagram and social media, yeah, especially, yeah. obviously, I'm guessing your team watches you, right? But 100%. Like, <laughs> dude, like, brag. Yeah. That's what they're doing. And it's so funny, right? Like you'll even see people repost pictures from, from before or whatever, their old pictures. And you're like, oh, I guess that's what they're doing right now. Like it's, it's so funny how social media works, right? Uh, so it's, you know, yeah. it's like could have, you could have posted a picture on Instagram of you sleeping yes, and then worked your whole fucking ass the whole day. All they know is Darren's sleeping. You slept. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's so true. So perception's a big game. Right. Now. I love it. I love it. So, hey, I think everyone who just listened to this hopefully got a little bit inspired, understands that sales is crucial, whether you're getting into the industry, whether you're building a sales team for your business. Sales is something that you need to do. You need to understand you're going to need if you're going to scale anything, whether it's your personal income or your company's revenue, whatever it is, sales is critical. I've learned that more than ever. I'm now on, and I mean, this is hyper relevant. Like I bring people on the podcast that are relevant to me and hopefully that brings value to others because I'm in the process now of like, I need to scale myself. I need to get a sales guy in here. I need to train someone. I need to grow my business. Um, and that's why I've been in contact with you guys. I've been, I've been speaking with you about it. So hopefully others who are in the same boat got some value out of this and realized, hey, like it's time to wake up. I can't do everything as a business owner. I got to build a sales team. Or maybe it's, it's that student who's like, hey, I'm not happy. I got to admit it. I got to try something else. Let me do this thing that Daniel did. Maybe I can overcome my own uh, issues that I'm going through or impediments or struggles. Um, hopefully that did inspire one or the other side here and someone, at least one person makes a change, but all of this was super, super valuable. I really, really appreciate it, man. Is there any final words that you want to leave off with? Where can people connect with you? What do you want them to do? The floor is yours. Yeah. I mean, my Instagram uh, is Daniel Ferrugia. If you want to add me on Facebook, um, if you want to, you know, connect uh, with me through any of my, uh, social media links, uh, let's definitely talk. Um, Yeah. I would, I would love to mentor anyone and, uh, and give back as much value as all the value I've been given throughout the years. So beautiful. Dude, you're going yeah, to get pleasure. DMs now for sure. I, I get like one a week. <laughs> hey, can you mentor me? I'm like, okay, at this point, I'd love to, but no, I can't help everyone. We'll you're going to get those now. Maybe you if you come work it. with us. <laughs> maybe if, if you come work with us, then maybe. Boom. Oh, and that's the thing. I mean, so if, if anyone's listening, by the way, that wants to get into sales, do you have any kind of call to action for them? Is there, should they contact you guys? Can you guys help? Like, what's the deal? Yeah. I'm the, I'm, I'm the recruiter. So if you want to contact me through Daniel Ferruja, um, contact me, uh, DM me, we'll bring you to our office. Uh, we'll show you around, we'll figure out something and, uh, and, uh, then I can definitely mentor you. Love it. So if anyone wants to get into sales, reach out to Daniel or reach out to me and I'll connect you with Daniel either way. Um, if you want to get into sales, you don't know where to start, let us know. And Daniel's going to take care of you. Awesome. I love man. You've been listening to the obscurity to authority podcast. Tune in again next week with your host, Darren Cabral, as he explores the blueprint of success.